Hello, I'm Bonnie Burkert, and this is Truth Be Told, Transformation. Sharing tools for transformation to live your highest truth. So what is that, your highest tr truth? I ask that question every week. In this instance, this week, we're going to talk about our intuition and how it's a superpower. I think it's a great thing to reflect on, and we've got Angela Wicks to talk to us uh, a little bit more about that. Welcome, Angela. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So when did you first tap into intuition? Um, you know, I came to things with um, an interest in, it all started with an interest in angels, really. Um, I've had a really spiritual, inquisitive, curious nature since I was a kid. And um, I wanted to connect with these spiritual beings. And so, um, you know, I grew up in a religious practice. And so prayer was a part of it. And um, naturally, part of prayer is then listening back to the messages that you're receiving from um, the things that you're inquiring about. And so intuition for me came a lot through that um, communication with spirit. And from there, um, you know, it's, it's almost like the older I got, the more sensitive I became. And this has been true of intuition, of my spiritual practice, of um, my body, food sensitivities, sound sensitivities, just I, I've become sensitive in all of these different ways in um, ways that have somewhat cursed me and also ways that have absolutely blessed me. So um, intuition, it, that's how it started for me was with that interest in connecting with spirit. And yeah, that's I wonderful. think it, pro it progressed from there. Um, as almost kind of like survival mode because I've always been super shy and uh, assessing my environments intuitively. So using that empathic ability to kind of gauge where things are at when I'm in new environments. Wow. Okay. That's, that's wonderful. So I, I, I do want to introduce that uh, you've written a book called The Secret uh, secret psychic. So was that an experience for you? Did you feel that you had to keep this awareness? And I'm not even going to say skill yet. I'm not going to go there, but just that initial awareness when you were younger. And I'm assuming that you were, um, you were perhaps younger as you were already sort mm -hmm. of starting to explore more the spiritual side of and listening to the spiritual side of life. So did yes. you have to keep that secret, Angela? Definitely. Um, I, you know, there's cues from society, from the people that you're surrounded by that um, unless you're immersed, I feel like in people who are interested in this topic, <laughs> there's cues from TV, from society, from family, from friends that um, this isn't completely understood. Um, it's kind of weird it can be scary for people if they don't understand, um, like if you know things that they haven't told you, um, that can be kind of scary for people sometimes. And they might not understand where you're coming from, um, how you have these insights. And so, yeah, I felt like I did need to keep this side of myself secret. Um, and I explored a lot just in my bedroom, reading books. <laughs> that was my starting point of um, just, you know, quiet space and exploring on my own. I love that you were able to find books. I mean, nowadays, and I know that you work, um, you work with Llewellyn. So you're published through Llewellyn yeah. and you work with them as well, correct? So, I mean, what yep. a blessing to have books. And I think about it now, um, there's so much information out there on all kinds of um, spiritual, yeah. including a podcast like this, a show like yeah. this, that is sharing this information far and wide globally. So mm -hmm. um, how did you find books? Was, there, was it something in the library? I mean, was there an Amazon you could order from back then? I don't think so. <laughs> no. <laughs> you look young. Um, um, but <laughs> I remember going to my local, it, we had a, a strip mall. And I would ride my bike there. And there was this one bookstore there. Um, and they 
like I said, my, my beginning interest was in angels and they would have books on angels there. And I remember that was kind of how I started out was finding books in this one bookstore that was within distance of my home. Um, where were you? Where, where uh, was I located? Yeah. Where um, were you living at that time? In Wisconsin, awesome. in central Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. No, just saying, yeah. I mean, perhaps different parts because I grew up in the Midwest as well. And yeah. so different parts. I was I was in Europe at one time, but I I don't know. I mean, I can I can definitely think about times when I was little, those imaginary friends that I had. I'm like, yeah, who who was that? You know, yeah. I mean, I really do wonder that sometimes. Yeah, but, there's interesting things that we don't understand. Right. Why, like things that we don't understand why they were the way they were that we can get this new perspective on when we're older. <laughs> it's really interesting. Like um, I tell a story in the book where there was one instance where I was playing with this toy and it had a little bee on it and it was magnetized. So it was in this bottle and I would kind of move the bottle around and it would look like the bee was flying around. <laughs> and I was so focused on this toy and just intrigued. I thought it was just really amazing. and. Um, I all of a sudden I heard right in my ear and it was like that like someone like a human being making that noise like right in my ear and I was just like oh my gosh I didn't understand that in the moment you know I was probably like seven or eight years old um but in hindsight now when I'm looking back and I tune into like okay what was that experience I I can recognize that oh this was a spirit I feel like it's someone that I'm connected to. Um, and they were just messing with me. Could they be. were just like having some fun. Right. It was a moment. way to get your attention or something like yeah. that. Right. Yeah. Now and I feel like there have been those moments where um, those I'm connected to in spirit have kind of led left breadcrumb trails so that once I was older and I could look back, once I had more perspective and insight and understanding of these abilities, that it was like, oh, it has existed since I was a kid. Um, and I can remember those select stories. Yeah. Okay. No, it's interesting. And I'm, I'm kind of brainstorming right now. I'm going off into my own, like trying to remember some of my earlier, what might've been, I mean, I think there were some angels watching over me in some of my crazy teenage years. That's for sure. Thank you. Guardian <laughs> angels. No question about that. But when I started to actually string it all together, and yeah. I will say for me, it probably wasn't until college that I started to have a, more of an awareness. And I mean, again, I didn't have, I wasn't privy to as much information as exists out, out there now. I mean, now there's mm -hmm. TV shows about, you know, what, I mean, it could be, it could be Sabrina the Teenage Witch or something like that. I mean, but they have yeah. so many shows and I think yeah. that probably mysticism for me came through music because if you listen to certain i don't know like certain I, I, through the years I'm, i i don't want to say like you know the classic rock records you could you could definitely there those writers those songwriters definitely were giving us some kind of esoteric things to think about mm -hmm. but it was very psychedelic oriented it was you know it was from a drug culture i think a lot of it, but hey, that's yeah. a gateway of opening, right. perhaps in some, yeah, in some ways. I would say for me, I I did some reading um, on Carlos from Carlos Castaneda. Do you, do you know him? Um, no, I don't. I, he's from it's. Um, he was an author with a lot of books that were popular in the seventies, and it was a little bit more from um, shamanic uh, teachings. But the point that that doesn't really matter. Specific. It was more just generally listening, listening to cues from the environment, and that was a big awakening for me. Mm -hmm. So I think that just you know again like if a bird flies near there could be a message there's energy it's an energy exchange with all of those things and i think that's when mm -hmm. i started to really have some connections with what was happening and listening more carefully right mm -hmm. and i would think yeah. i was taking outer cues but i feel like what you um and then we learn the inner more about the inner cues and would you say that your book helps guide that Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Tell us a little yeah, more about um, what all is in there. Um, so in the book, I, I talk about um, one, what it means to be a secret psychic to begin with. Like if you might have these abilities, why you might feel 
like you might need to be keeping it secret for yourself. Um, and then I delve into guidance about your subtle intuition, what those abilities might look like, how they might be manifesting for you personally, because it's really different for each person. Like for you, like you're saying, it started out with music. For me, it was through reading stories, fiction books too. Mm. Um, Any examples? Then, like just out of curiosity? Um, you know, when I was like, 10, 11, 12, I was reading, um, I can't even remember the author, but um, she had a lot of books about um, like kids with cancer or like kind of sad stories, mm -hmm. but then there would be like angels or some kind of spiritual experience. So that was kind of my entry into this sense of spirituality and connection with spirit. Okay. Um, yeah. Healing. And it just evolved from there. Right. So um, yeah, I get into like what these abilities might look like for you and um, how you can work with them independently because when you're feeling like you have to be secret, a lot of the resources that I, I can remember that I was finding early on, they would talk about doing these exercises with a partner and it was always just like, I don't have a partner, I'm right. alone. I'm right. alone. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So. So I made sure to make it um, independent practice that you can be developing and um, then a step beyond just your own personal intuition and tuning into your own energy. I go into tuning into the natural occurrence of spirit communication and tuning into the messages like you're saying that you might be getting from your environment from animals you know from a billboard that you've I passed know. a million times but all of a sudden it seems like the message is screaming at you these yeah. certain words yeah um so I get into a lot of those different types of communications that might be coming to you numbers would be another thing yeah so no it's great so um what would you say about Okay, so that you those are examples of what you were, would refer to as spirit communication. Yes. Okay. Um, spirit communication. It might be coming through animals, through external signs. Um, in and the, the music, world right? I mean, it goes yes, back to definitely. music. It's so funny. Yeah. Have you ever heard the term um, people were using back in the iPod days? They would call it "I God." That the, oh. you, they would go and shuffle, and then so there would be this song that would be so relevant. Um, and Divination through they, iPod. <laughs> so I guess I love that. <laughs> we can do that maybe with um, Spotify playlists now or something yeah. like that. But that's, you know, that's really interesting, Angela. I'm having this kind of, you know, aha moment right now about how it comes in different ways. So, right, that we all we all find those, those little hits. Um, and we, we perhaps have our area of specialization. And, and you know, I, I've worked around music for a lot of my life um, as, you know, in marketing mm -hmm. and things like that. And I don't play any music, but I'm, it's all, I mean, I always have some music playing. And so, yeah. hmm, interesting, right? Like what's, yeah. what, it's, a del, it's almost like it's a delivery mechanism f for us. Definitely, yes. Right? Right? Yeah. And maybe everybody has it in, in, in different ways. Yeah. And for me, a lot of it comes through, like I'm talking about how I heard that buzzing in my ear. Um, I get a lot of direct spirit communication. Okay. So like, for example, there was one time when I was just landscaping out in my yard and all of a sudden I heard my sister in spirit and she was talking with a grandparent who had just passed away that week. And it was like she was giving him a tour of the space. And she was like, oh, and sometimes she can hear me. So she was like talking about me to him of just like, oh, and sometimes she can hear me. And then she went on with her tour to him. So it was like, I just, oh, I get these random messages wow. or I'll like overhear things from spirit. And it's just super interesting sometimes where so, it's just, okay, I'm not so trying, it just happens. Yeah. Okay. Now, at what point in your life did that happen? I mean, were you still, you know, you mentioned being in your sort of tween ages when you were really starting to put, you know, sort of transcend the stories you were talking about, the healing journeys that you would read about as a young person, but you st you, you derived the, the mystical spiritual meaning out of it with, uh, mm -hmm. there were some angels involved and, and that it was, um, so at what point did you start to, I guess, get your confidence that this wasn't just something in the storybook, that this is something that was actually happening to you? 
Um, when I was in my teens, my early teens, I, I was just reading so much and I started practicing automatic writing. Oh, okay. And I think that's really when it was kind of like, okay, I can feel this energy. Like I can feel yeah. this, something is moving my arm right now and I'm getting this message and it kind of, you know, it pans out. Um, it makes sense. And I know this isn't coming from my brain right now. So wow. that was kind of when I started feeling like, there was real confirmation behind it. Now, had you read something about automatic writing and you said, I'm going to try this? Or were yeah, you journaling um, anyway? And No, uh, I was reading a book by James Van Krog. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a blue cover. It has heaven in the title. I can't think <laughs> we'll of it We'll put it right in now, the comments but... on YouTube if you want to yeah, check it. <laughs> yeah, that was um, one of the first books that I can remember. Uh, it had really good practices in it, and automatic writing was one of the practices. Okay, so, so that um, was, um, was that a book on developing your psychic abilities? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yep. So there's a tool. Again, you know, we like to share tools here, so that might be an example um yes. of of a tool that one could use um yep. okay so and i'm sure that you explain a few more things in the book um but i wanted to ask you is is the book um informational in terms of tools like that or would you say the book is more to develop one's confidence to to that it this is real and that it's okay and it's there's... both okay um so i have i have a lot of explanation um and breaking things down so that you can understand um, common hurdles that you might come across. There's a lot of troubleshooting. It lays a clear foundation for what, what these um, abilities are all about. And I have over 20 practices in there that I've broken down to take you step-by-step step through your own development. Um, and then in at the end of the book, there's an index or an appendix with common symbols that you might come across in your practice. So you can, it can kind of walk you through helping to understand all of that. But then there's a recommended resources section that has a lot of really, really good resources that you can expand on. Even if you read this book, you can move past it to explore even more resources. So there's a ton of really good information. No, for your that's practice. really cool. I look forward to, to checking it out myself. So, going back to again your younger years were you did you find this in some way in conflict with your religious upbringing i mean i'm assuming you're still at home going to church with your family mm -hmm. was it like that that's what it was for me yeah um, i did um so i i kept testing the waters i would ask questions of um you know my ccd instructors or um the priest at my church uh -huh. and just kind of feel things out of like, okay, are they, would they be accepting if they knew that this is who I was? <laughs> okay. um, and I just was always left unsure. And so I continued to be secretive about everything. Um, and I really didn't start sharing with people until I was in college. Mm -hmm. My husband didn't even really know. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I got married when I was 19. And um, this was just a side of myself that was just for me. Until um, I, I talk about in the book, there's this one experience where I clearly gave information um, from someone who had passed away. And it was so shocking to me and to the other people that I shared it with that it was just something that I had to tell my husband about. And that kind of opened the door to the progression of me taking more classes and letting myself really delve into this world. Amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, does it come through dreams for you or is it more, does it yeah, come through um, dreams for you? If it comes through dreams, usually it is a visitation so I don't get like some people get premonition dreams where they'll get psychic information and then it ends up occurring in real life mm -hmm. for me it's more um I'm getting messages from those who I've known in life who have passed away I see yeah 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 I've had I've had a, two huge premonition dreams um in my life like they were yeah it was crazy it really happened. And one, yeah, yeah I, I, yeah. <laughs> I think it's I'm amazing not... to me that 
I'm not going to get that happens story for path. people. I'm like, it was too much. It was, it was crazy. I, I will tell you, I'll tell you one of the two. One was, um, I didn't realize that I had dreamed it until a couple days later and I wrote it down in my journal and I would like to share the practice of writing down one's dreams as a source of revelation because if you look back like I used to yeah. write I used to journal but never read it and then I'd go back yeah. I finally decided to go back and it was crazy it was it was so helpful so in this mm -hmm. instance I had gotten laid off from a, a job in, in a real shocking way and three days later I went back and looked in my journal and I had written that night, the, the morning before going into work, the day I got laid off, I had written about, um, it was me in the record label, and I, I, I was in a record store, and then, and then cut to, I was impaled, like, you know, like Vlad the Impaler. Oh my God. And that's what I had written down in my journal. And then a few days later, I realized, wow, that was foreshadowing my day. Isn't Yo. That crazy? Yo. Yeah. And I don't, I, you know, it's funny. I don't, I, I love this world. I spend, um, I, I, we talked before we got online here that, you know, about a yoga practice, which I, I think through the breath work and the calming and finding meditation, I think that definitely, definitely opens us up to intuition, to our intuition, right? We're, oh, yeah. we're training yeah. ourselves. So I've never really used the term psychic for myself. And yet, um, I guess I'm giving you a few examples where, in fact, something happens. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when it comes down to it, we are all definitely well, psychic. Yes. <laughs> that's, yes. I think that's great. It's just, it's built in. It's part of who we are and what we are. And I want to convey that because I feel the, the listeners of this show fully understand that. So that's where you and I can talk more openly about I mean, we I don't we don't have to. I think I feel our listeners aren't necessarily keeping it um, secret, uh, <laughs> but they may want yeah. some of these tips and tools. And yeah. uh, I I want to ask you about your other book, and let's see if I've got the the title. It's the little book of unicorns. Yes. Yep. All yep. right. So we're gonna. I want to sidebar into unicorns a little bit and tell me how this okay. all <laughs> ties in for you. So fascinating subject one that I don't know that much about so what would you like to share with me about that book um my favorite thing about it is that um like I delve into the topic on different levels so I I explore the history of unicorns so the folklore and how um, they've manifested throughout history throughout different cultures around the world wow. Um, so real world stories about the unicorn, but then from there, I'm getting into how unicorns have become this amazing archetype and how they've just exploded in modern culture. I mean, they're everywhere. If you go into a store, you're going to see a unicorn somewhere. Yeah. I mean, it's right so now. true. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the book is using that archetype of unicorns as a metaphor for um, how we can embrace our own inner magic and find this authentic joy within ourselves, even through dark times. And when I was writing this book, I had just gone through some of the hardest years of my life. Um, and this related to chronic illness, um, illness that I've had since I was, you know, a preteen and had just progressed through my life. So I had been in a really, really dark phase of my life. And I feel like I came back alive when I was writing this book and it saved a part of me. It brought a piece of me back to myself and um, it it um, is just about reconnecting with that magic part of yourself that you've lost. And that's what it gave me. And I'm hoping that that's what it will give other people as well. That's amazing. How much did you know about and know about and relate to unicorns when you decided that you wanted to kind of compile all this information for us? This was another <laughs> another secret side of myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a theme here, but um, <laughs> I've really loved unicorns since I was a kid, and you know, at some point 
when I got to a certain age, it was kind of like, oh, people are going to think I'm silly or I'm being just a little kid when I need to start growing up now. And so I kept it secret. I even forgot about it myself that this was something that I loved so much until it started um, manifesting in the world again, where it just appears everywhere. And yeah. I started remembering like, oh my gosh, I used to really love unicorns. Why did I let that go? Um, so it really gave me permission to look at that side of myself again and explore why I even liked them to begin with. Um, amazing. No, I love that. And it makes, uh, I'm going to uh, <laughs> explore that too, but it, it is so fun. I love that unicorns are everywhere um, again, yeah. but you're right. It wasn't always the case. So that's no, it so, wasn't. <laughs> right. That's so. That's what's so really interesting. Well, I'm sorry yep. to hear that you had a, a shadowy time. I think we all do. Um, yeah. And you know, it's very interesting. And I, I love that ju you're you're basically inviting us to to explore something playful, um, uh, to find some magic, and that could show up in a lot of different ways. Maybe it's a crystal. I mean, I used to yeah. think about how I, I love crystals. I'm always always collecting crystals but do you remember mm -hmm. once upon a time that people had pet rocks it was just a joke yeah <laughs> it was a joke and they were selling rocks that i don't yeah. know maybe they had little eyes on them or something like that yeah but how nice it was to have right and now we've kind of you know sort of upgraded that experience with something that really is a semi-precious stone that was yeah. forged in the earth and and why not how could it not have energy? I mean, it was mm -hmm. gravity that created it and with huge pressure. And um, yep. uh, I don't know, maybe that helps us find some magic that way, right? So yep. I think, again, a tool. So I'd like to bring it back around to your the development of your psychic awareness and feeling more comfortable and going through it. So the unicorn your book about unicorns was written first right because yes. uh the secret psychic uh book was um is more recent it's more recent release do you feel that this was a a, a quickening of your development in terms of uh, when you went w during the writing process and when you said this was a reaction to sort of having to work through um a darker time in your life do you think that it opened up the realms that much broader for you working on unicorns and then perhaps, I think it yeah. gave me permission it gave, it allowed me to give myself permission okay to open the doors wide mm. on everything um like I said with writing the unicorns I felt like I was coming back to myself or a piece of myself I had rediscovered um it really was uh these parts of myself that I didn't talk about that I even hid for myself that it, I couldn't I couldn't find on my own but in writing these books and trying to process and put things in order um remembering for, forgotten things it just um it brought it all for a full circle and with the unicorn book I felt so much joy after I completed that book I was just um so happy and when I finished the secret psychic book, I felt this sense of completion um, in that I had closure with so many things that um, just, it's this permission of allowing yourself to be who you are. Um, and that's what these books definitely brought me. Wow, the truth of who you are, amazing. Now you also are an artist, right? So yes. you, um, you designed the cover of the secret psychic? I didn't design it, but one of my paintings was used in the cover. So um, the paint, the artwork that you see in the background on the cover, that is a portion of a painting that I did. And I talk about that in the book as well. Beautiful. So how, okay, so here's another tool, art, right? So you've talked about yes. writing. Yeah. Right? I've talked about things yeah. like crystals and looking at birds. Um. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about art for you. Painting. So the art that appears on this cover, it actually came about um, a couple of years after my sister died. Um, my sister, Amanda, she's someone who comes up in the book quite a bit. Oh, that's tough. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, thank you. Uh, she She's someone who we really connected on these topics. 
um, we were both secret psychics growing <laughs> up. We didn't even talk about it really to each other um, because we didn't know that we were safe people to talk about with um, the, on this topic. It wasn't until we were in college and it, and I started taking classes and she's, she realized that, that we really opened up to each other about it all. Um, so after she passed away, she instantly became this very strong connection for me in spirit. And uh -huh. um, right after I found out that she had died, I had this vision of her. Um, and that's what this painting was about. It was a reflection of that vision that I had. And I've done other paintings as well, just processing my loss of her, but also my continued relationship with her as I'm in this world and she's in the other world. So artwork has been huge for me. Art therapy is such an important tool. Hi there. Are you still with us, Angela? I just see a little, yes. a little break. Sorry, there was just a little glitch. Okay. Mercury's in retrograde. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. And I, you know, I feel um, I've been feeling really drawn to art. Like I'm super uh, into color, and I, I do a lot of graphic design work. And it's just, I don't know day of the week of what color is associated with a certain day of the week and you know and all kinds of things like that so yes I understand yep. that and I and I love hearing that um uh these different tools now you are also a Reiki master is that correct yeah okay yep. so tell us how that all weaves in for you the energy work of Reiki um I started looking into energy work again, when I was in college. Um, and this was before it, it was really big, before it was really known um, widely. But I found someone near my college who attuned me to it. And it was this really interesting experience where, you know, a, a big part of me was like, oh my gosh, I believe in this. I feel it. Um, I want to learn more. But is this real? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and when I went to her for this attunement, she was telling me about it. She was kind of moving her hands around and just explaining things. And she stopped midway and she was like, is there something with your heart? Like, do you have something in your heart? And I was just like, yeah, because <laughs> I actually have um, this, uh, it's, it's like a little metal device that was inserted into my heart when I was around 19. Oh, wow. And I'd never, you know, I didn't blog. I didn't write at that time. There was no information about this out there anywhere. And it was just like, oh my gosh, okay, this lady's real. Okay, wow. <laughs> and oh, um, my experience with that attunement was just amazing on a lot of levels. And it just started me on my journey. Um, I got attuned to uh, different levels and I started practicing with it a lot when I did massage. Oh, great. So you do massage work as well. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. how are you working with people at this point? I mean, obviously, um, we're still uh, remote in a lot of the work that and offerings that exist out there. So tell us a little bit about that and what it's like working with people. Are, is it mostly locally or can people find you from anywhere? Um, I do some distance energy work right now. So um, that information is all on my website. And um, I also am connected with Echo Bodin, who is also an author. She was one of my instructors in psychic development and energy work. And she has a program, it's called the um, Healing Pen Pal Program. And if you go to Echo Bodin's website, that program is all shared on there. And anyone can submit for free energy healing from distance for oh, really? all of the energy workers who are connected to that. Oh, wow. That's beautiful to be a part of something like that. Yeah. And it is convenient in today's world. <laughs> yeah, indeed. So I would love to ask your opinion. Um, we've talked a little bit about what it was like being younger and maybe not having as many resources as, as exist right now. What do you think it, it means? The fact that there's an acceleration um, of so much interest in this. I mean, I remember going into an Urban Outfitters. This was already several years ago and there were an incredible amount of books on witchcraft and I mean yeah. maybe it's the Harry Potter that sparked a lot of this I mean it's always been there but it's fascinating and you go on Instagram I spend you know plenty of time on there and 
I just see so many people that are just putting out just such positive message and really illuminated. And so I'd love to hear your take on where we're at, where, you know, in 2022 and sort of a certain amount of momentum that perhaps has yeah. even quickened over um, since the lockdown in 2020. So please tell me your thoughts yeah. on that. I see it as a snowball. You know, it's like once there have been these people that have been working at, at these things like witchcraft, paganism, um, this psychic ability, energy work, they've been there and they've been kind of behind the scenes. But now as more information is becoming available, as the internet came out and people could connect from a distance and gather information more easily and connect with one another, I just think that that has sped up the progression and it's become this kind of exponential growth and development. Um, and I think the more that people see others allowing themselves to open up and practice these types of things, the more they think, oh, well, maybe then it's okay for me to do this too. And it just keeps ticking along more and more and more. Um, people allowing themselves to be who they are and be drawn and connect with the practices that feel authentic to them. Right. Which listening. is fantastic. Yeah. Listening to listening and that that instinct, that 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 um intuitive voice to trust it. Right. Yep. To pay closer and, attention to it. Yep. And also to learn how to even recognize it because we're all we're all using these abilities. It's just we aren't always recognizing them. Even one of the last stories that I wrote about in the book, this message came through and it was on the hour for like five hours. And it wasn't until I sat down and journaled like, okay, what's everything that happened today? Because it feels significant. Um, it wasn't until I looked at that journal entry then after I wrote it all down that it was like, oh my gosh, this was this was a spirit coming through who was trying to get this message through. And I never would have gotten it if I hadn't sat down and wrote it all out. So we're always getting these intuitive hits and these messages and connections, but it takes this sense of awareness of sitting down and paying attention um, to really start to work with it as a practice. A practice. I thank you for, for that was a word I was looking for. And I encourage everybody. I mean, I think the importance of a daily practice and um, can really help get into a rhythm uh, and and open oneself up to to this. Um, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, this, I, I called the show, of, you know, intuition being a super superpower. And we yeah. I let's let's both just reinforce. It's really something that we we all have. And I feel that the daily practice provides an anchor and a discipline yeah. to a certain extent. Yeah. And I really w want to just say um, the daily practice could be simple. It really could be a three minute meditation, but do it daily. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know we want to do it longer. And I did want to ask you where meditation fits into your practice. I mean, do you have recommendations around that as far as how one I meditates? I do. Um, I have some meditations in the book. Okay. One of what I feel is the most important meditations is learning how to tune into your own energy yeah. and listen to um, one to begin to recognize the feel and the tone of your own energy versus other energy that might be coming at you externally. Um, but then also learning to tune in so that you can understand the messages that are coming to you. So that is a definite foundational meditation. Um, for me, I really love guided meditations. So whether it's like the meditations that I include in the book, where you're kind of reading along and doing the meditation in your head at the same time, or you can pre-record it and listen back to it. Or there's just so many available on YouTube or um, just online resources where you can type in whatever type of meditation you want, whether it's for relaxation relaxing or tuning into spirit types of things lots of resources are available beautiful thank you well there has been so much to think about and to feel right because that's kind of what we're talking about here yeah. so i mean i really encourage everybody to 
to go deep and and I feel that your book the secret the secret psychic really can offer lots of um, lots of ways to explore this so thank you for joining us today yes thank you so much for having me again. yeah it's really been great Angela I look forward to reading the book and hearing more and 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 dying of curiosity to see what you'll share with us next so <laughs> You know, until then, please, everybody, find Angela on her website. And thanks for finding us um, at uh, Truth Be Told Paranormal on Instagram. And uh, you can see Tony Sweet's sh weekly show on Fridays at 3 p.m. Pacific. That would be live. And Robert Hensley is live at 3 p.m. on Mondays as well. Uh, this is Truth Be Told, Truth Be Told Transformation. I'm Bonnie Burkert, and we're very happy that you're listening with us today. Until the next time. Namaste.